Hey sailors, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Jenda, and this is my let's play of Rule the Waves 3 as the United States. This is the 1930 special, in which we'll be going over the various warships that exist in the world at this point in the game. It's now the late battleship era, heading on towards sort of the the beginnings of the carrier era, as it were. And so there are quite a few aircraft carriers around, along with a veritable assortment of dreadnought battleships. Uh, Britain's fleet is the first to exceed a million tons in the world, and Germany, the USA, and Russia are not far behind. France has fallen very far behind after a recent war with them. So without further ado, let's take a look around at the designs in service. The smallest fleet in the world is currently Spain, which is not really a surprise. Uh, they have 40 destroyers, amounting to 57,000 tons. But some of them as old as 15 years old. However, none under 1,000 tons, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, the U.S. doesn't quite have any of those either anymore, but I thought Spain might. They have the Bustamante class with two 4-inch guns and 30 knots, plus, what, two twin torpedoes? Two triple torpedo tubes, yeah. And then the more recent Jose Luis Diaz class with three five-inch guns and I'm guessing three triple torpedo tubes and they make 31 knots to boot. Uh, although with their latest design they've reverted the three four-inch guns and six torpedo tubes but they make 33 knots. So apparently they're going for speed over in Spain. Uh, then after them we'll have... Wildly enough, France is now the second smallest navy in the game. Um, they have 50 destroyers currently remaining in service, amounting to 79,000 tons. They have some of these old 1,100 tonners with 4-inch guns still, along with, well, most of the core of their fleet. They have a few experimental types. Destroyer-wise, most of them are one of these varieties of Three four-inch guns, 32 knots, two triple torpedo tubes. Uh, but they do have the more recent classes with four five-inch guns and I'm guessing two quadruple torpedo tubes. They're, it's hard to be sure just looking at this image, but eight torpedoes is probably two quadruple tubes. Uh, after France, Austria-Hungary, currently at 49 destroyers, 76,000 tons, so just a little bit less than France in this department. They have a few old 1,100 tonners with two 5-inch guns and three triple tubes, which make 30 knots. Uh, then the bulk of their fleet is either three 4-inch or three 5-inch gun-armed ships with Somewhere between 6 and 8 torpedo tubes, and it looks like they pretty much all make, well, some of them make 34 knots even, which is quite impressive. They're different in detail, but not, I mean, they're all destroyers, they're fairly similar. The most impressive thing is they do have this class of modern 1800 tonners, which make 35 knots and have 8 4-inch guns. Although, it doesn't visually look to me like they're twin turrets, but I'm guessing it has to be four twin turrets. I don't see how they'd shove all those guns on otherwise, really. Italy uh, actually has the least destroyers out of anybody, including in ton it No, sorry, Spain is less, but uh, only 42 destroyers, 76,000 tons. Quite a small force. Uh, they have some of these older Euro-class destroyers with... Two four-inch guns, two triple torpedo tubes. They do make 33 knots. Uh, they have a few interim five-inch designs with triple torpedo tubes. And then the bulk of their fleet is these classes with either two or three four-inch guns built in the late tens with two triple torpedo tubes. Very recently, they've begun building the Leone class with four five-inch guns, 33 knots, and probably two quadruple torpedo tubes, if I had to guess, although it could be four twin, but probably not. Then after them we will have Japan, which is a big step up to 74 destroyers amounting to 119,000 tons. 
So that's a very large destroyer force. They do have some of the older designs with two 4-inch guns and only two twin torpedo tubes. These are under 1,000 tons. They're quite obsolete now. Uh, their first foray into a, over 1,000 tonners was this class with two 4-inch guns and... It might be two quadruple tubes. Built in 1917, it could be four twin tubes. Uh, however, they followed that up with several classes with two 5-inch or three 4-inch, three 5-inch, three 4-inch guns. All not maybe hugely functionally different. The bulk of them have six torpedoes, but the more recent one, The older ones have six. The more recent ones have eight. More recently, they've been building... Jeez, it is just an absolutely enormous number they have here. They mostly switched to three five-inch guns more recently, but still some with four-inch guns. And some of them with three five-inch guns and three triple torpedo tubes, which are probably their better 1,500-ton designs. Uh, most recently, they've managed to build some with four five-inch guns and probably two quadruple tubes that make 35 knots, which are quite nice ships. Russia... Has the fourth largest navy in the world now, but not a great destroyer force at 59 ships amounting to about 77,000 tons. Uh, they still have a few old 1,100 tonners with four four inch guns and a total of two twin torpedo tubes in service. Aside from that, they have this odd Zevoy class on which they've managed to stuff two six inch guns along with two triple torpedo tubes. I don't know that that's optimal, but. It's what they wanted, so it's what they got. Uh, then they went the opposite way by putting only two four-inch guns on some designs before basically they've poured out a bunch of either three five-inch or three four-inch gun armed destroyers with six to nine torpedoes, mostly six or eight. In the very recent era, they've... No, that's pretty much still where they're at, actually. They have actually shrunk their destroyers recently. The latest class, five years old, has three four-inch guns and two triple torpedo tubes, so they're not really in with the revolution of twin-gun destroyers at all yet. Um, then the United States, us, we have 70 destroyers amounting to 155,000 tons, which is, will be, the, well, 18 of them, it, that tonnage includes the ones under construction, so... A lot of that tonnage is not actually ready yet. Britain maybe still has the largest force in the world. It's hard to judge because they're also building a lot. But we have one of the very largest destroyer forces in the world, certainly by tonnage. Those consist of a healthy complement of the older Lawrence class, which has three four-inch guns, two three-inch guns, um, three triple torpedo tubes, and makes 33 knots. Uh... Now, they were all built, well, the ones that are still in service were only built about a decade ago, actually, which isn't so bad. Sorry, my cat's messing about with something. Um, however, they've just become, they're pretty, they're pretty excellent ships for when they were built. However, they've become increasingly obsolete due to our more recent classes. The Henley class did not get built in huge numbers and then took some significant losses in the war, I believe. So there's only a relatively limited number of them in, left in service, but they had four five-inch guns. Along with, I believe it's three quadruple torpedo tubes and make 33 knots. Plus a pretty healthy complement of mines because we had this capacity, I think. Actually, the bulk of the destroyer fleet now for the U.S. is the 1,900-ton Winslow class, which have eight 5-inch guns and four twin turrets, two quadruple torpedo tube launchers, and uh, make 34 knots, plus a limited mine complement. They are pretty excellent, and I believe depth charge throwers as well, yes. So they're pretty excellent all-around destroyers. They have, I believe, pretty much the most gunnery power out of anything in the world. They are quite fast, and they're good at anti-submarine operations as well. They even have a limited AA armament. The only problem with them is that they're pretty expensive. Uh, but we're at the United States. We have the largest budget in the world, so it's not a huge problem per se. Uh, Germany 
has 98 destroyers, which is the most in the world by numbers, although only amounting to 130,000 tons. So a lot of them are a bit on the light side, and yeah, you will note that probably half of that fleet are 1,100 tonners. And the older ones only have two 5-inch guns plus two twin torpedo tubes. The more recent ones mostly have three 4 or three 5-inch guns with probably two quadruple tubes. And a few with two triple tubes. Well, then they have these 1,300 tonners, which I assume are mostly faster. Yeah, but otherwise pretty much the same armament. And more recently, they've built a whole collection of 1,500 tonners with four 5-inch guns and probably two quadruple torpedo tubes, which are solid, not spectacular, of course. They also have a few with six 4-inch guns, and their most recent class, the Jaguars, have eight 4-inch guns in... I really have to assume that it's also in twin mounts, because I don't see where else the guns would be. Uh, Dual-purpose mounts as well, which is fair. Um and two quadruple torpedo tubes, which is pretty much the standard for most modern destroyers, I think. And finally, Britain probably actually still has the largest force in the world overall, with 93 destroyers, amounting to 155,000 tons. Now, a lot of those are still these old 1,100 tonners, although theirs almost all have at least three to four four-inch guns. Uh, the older ones have two twin tubes, the more recent ones dropped one of the 4-inch guns to get triple tubes, or eventually quadruple tubes. They then built a 1,500-tonner series, one of which briefly had three 4-inch guns and two triple torpedo tubes, but they followed it very quickly with three 5-inch guns, and first triple tubes and then quadruple tubes, and then went back to 4-inches and to triple tubes, uh, maybe cost-saving, I don't know. They had a class with three five-inch guns and three triple tubes. Um, more recently, they've put out... In the early 20s, they built this whole class with three six-inch guns and two triple tubes, which is quite unusual. Uh, but then the most recently, they've been building to counter us, and as such, have built the Nereid, Nereid class, which has the eight five-inch guns in four twin turrets, 34 knots, two quadruple tubes, these are pretty much exactly comparable to our Winslow class, and they're about the only thing I've seen that is, although they're less efficient at 2,000 uh, 2, tons, unless they um, shoved something else into there that I can't see. However, apparently those were too expensive for them, because they then reverted to smaller uh, 15 and 1,700 ton designs. They're currently building a pile of 1,700 tonners with four 5-inch dual-purpose guns, 35 knots, two quadruple tubes. Okay, so that's the destroyers. Those are the basic ships, of course. Now we move on to... I'll cover the whole aviation arm altogether. So we'll move on to light cruisers first. Uh, those were really lagging behind for most countries in 1920, but it's improved somewhat by this date. Uh, Spain currently has six light cruisers, amounting to 31,000 tons. Four of them are the now rather geriatric and never good Infanta Isabel class from 1916. 5,100 tons. They do make 30 knots, which is good, but only three 5-inch guns is a pitiful armament for any cruiser, so... Nor does it even have deck torpedoes, so it's really quite a useless class. Somewhat more recently, they built the two Conde del Venedito class, at 5,700 tons, which have at least managed to get six six-inch guns. Um, maybe they're even all centerline. Although I only see four on the graphic, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe they all are. Uh, and 29 knots. Those are not as bad. They just certainly don't compare to the likes of the American Junos with 8 6-inch and 8 4-inch guns at higher speed. But to be fair, they're cheap, so I can't criticize them too harshly. Austria-Hungary only has four light cruisers amounting to 21,000 tons, which is less than anyone else in the world right now. 
Three out of the four are the Novara class from 1916. Five six-inch guns, two three-inch guns, 29 knots. They're basically a first-generation semi-modern light cruiser. They're not really good or efficient in any way, and they would definitely be destroyed by any of the modern American light cruisers, which I consider are pretty much still the standard, I believe. But um, they weren't terrible when they were built. Maybe they're still not absolutely awful. They also have, not this, Helgoland, which has six six-inch guns and makes 31 knots. And to be fair, that's probably an all-round better design. Uh, the speed especially is quite solid and will let it run away from most cruisers still. Uh, oh, I did skip France because I keep forgetting that they have so few ships left. Uh, France has 10 light cruisers, amounting to about 50,000 tons. Uh, their light cruiser force did take a bit of a beating in the recent war, but they still have the two ancient Amaral Ceciles, which are 3,500 tons, 28 knots, and two 5-inch guns. I hesitate to actually call these light cruisers. They're basically fast colonial gunboats or something. Avisos, perhaps? They're totally ineffective against any real modern cruiser. Uh, then they have the 3-4-bean class of 5,000 tons, 28 knots, 4 6-inch guns, 2 3-inch guns. Well armored, relatively speaking, um, but definitely underarmed compared to the best modern cruisers, and not especially fast either. Uh, then the two... Two remaining vessels of the Eastley class. I believe there were about five of these to start with, but only two survived the war. In fact, I could check that quite easily. Mm. Let me just sort by... Yeah, it looks like they lost three in the war. So there were five to start with, yeah. Oh boy. Anyway, at 29 knots, six six inch guns. Um, I mean, I have to admit, battlefield experience bore out that these, especially with the benefit of their two twin above wall, I think it's two twin, it could be one quadruple. I can't really tell for sure from this diagram. In any case, with the benefit of their above water torpedo tubes, which they use to considerable effect, these were actually able to give significantly, well, they gave older generation American light cruisers absolute fits uh, during the recent war with France. They didn't have as much time fighting the Junos, but the Junos generally did prove superior to them as long as they stayed out of torpedo range and focused on using gunnery, as you would expect from the size difference and gun power difference. Still, these, I have to say, not a bad design at all. They definitely proved themselves. Uh, those were followed up by... Oh, God, the, this is all... Um, if I switch countries, will this reorder itself? It did. Okay, good. Um, they followed that with the Bugud class, which has an extra 200 tons of weight. And honestly, I'm not sure what they got for that weight. It has the same gun armament, the same torpedo armament, even the same mines. It apparently has half an inch less of belt armor, and it's a knot slower. So what they did to add 200 tons, I really can't say. I'm guessing they added either maybe torpedo protection or deck armor, uh, which I wouldn't really know about either of those. But... Whatever they did, it's hard to say for sure if it's justified. I doubt this class is much better than the Elys anyway. But it's not terrible, terrible either. Although it gets, you know, having built the last of them only five years ago, it gets less of a pass for how inferior it is, probably still to with Juno. Uh, beyond France, then, Italy has seven light cruisers amounting to 40,000 tons. Uh, the older ones are the Airid class, which is 5,700 tons, 29 knots, six 6-inch six guns. A very typical example of your 
early modern light cruiser. And not bad at all. Uh, they followed that with two Minervas, which at 28 knots, only five five inch guns for their armament is definitely inadequate. So these are not a good, especially for the fact that they are a full 5,300 tons, aka 400 tons smaller than a ship with six six inch guns. The Minervas are not going to cut it, yeah. Um, especially when, well, f most recently they've built Kwati, which has 32 knots, 8 6-inch guns, in twin turrets, 8 4-inch guns, 2-inch belt. These are actually very similar to my Juno class and are a very excellent cruiser. Uh, the only problem is they have exactly one of them. And they then proceeded to build Tripoli, which has eight five-inch guns and 31 knots. This might be marginally better as a destroyer hunter than Kwati, but it's going to be much worse against other cruisers. Although the six above water torpedo tubes does suggest it's very much a torpedo cruiser, but Kwati has eight, so I don't know. After them, we're going to look at Japan. Japan has seven light cruisers amounting to 40,000 tons, which, considering their fleet is a good deal bigger than Italy's, it's interesting their light cruiser force is actually smaller. Uh, they have the two old Chishimas, which are 28 knots, 10 5-inch guns. These would still be pretty effective on destroyer picket duty, but would probably lose to most modern 6-inch gun-armed light cruisers. Uh, then the Matsushima class, five six-inch guns, 29 knots. Uh, these are, again, your very bog-standard early light cruiser design, basically. Right after they figured out how to put their six-inch guns on the center line. Uh, which means they're not great against the most modern ships, but not awful, awful. Uh, most recently, if they've built Yoshino, which is another... I'm going to be generous to myself and call it a Juno clone, basically. And it's quite a nice ship overall, especially getting 33 knots out of it is fairly impressive. Russia also has seven light cruisers amounting to 40,000 tons, so a lot of people have been kind of neglecting this force. They do have the old Pamyat Mercuria, which is 16 years old, but to its credit, 28 knots... 14 6-inch guns, of which only 4 are on the center line, but it still has, what, an 8, no, a 9-gun broadside? 4, 5 to a side, so yeah, a 9-gun broadside of 6-inch guns, which is pretty much more than nearly anybody in the world actually fields, even on the most modern cruisers. Plus, decent armor, not bad speed. It's actually still a fairly impressive cruiser, although the gun arcs on all of these are going to be kind of compromised, and in general it's not as great as if you had just four twin turrets, but for how old it is, it's still quite viable. Uh, they followed that with the Nadezhda class, which has 30 knots, seven six-inch guns, although I'm not convinced that they're all center line. I think maybe... Three of them are, and then it's two on each side, so it's really only five six-inch guns practically, plus four three-inch, uh, which makes it sort of a less optimal than usual early light cruiser, if anything. And they followed that with the two Floras with eight five-inch guns, 31 knots, six above-water tubes. These are torpedo cruisers. Boyarin, I can't even tell at a glance what's actually different from the Floras except that they felt the need to call it a different class for some reason. Uh, the United States, then, actually has very clearly the world's largest light cruiser force, with 12 light cruisers amounting to almost 94,000 tons, every one of which is of the very new Juno class, all built in the last six years. In fact, all built in a three-year period. These have... Eight six-inch guns in four twin turrets, eight four-inch guns. Ignore how screwed up the diagram looks. I promise for actual game purposes, it all works just fine. They make 30 knots, three-inch belt, one-inch deck. 
And the most modern fire control, a complement of mines. I still don't think there's any ship. Well, there's a very few very, very modern ships that are pretty much similar in armament and slightly faster. But I've only seen about maybe two or three of them in service in all the fleets I've looked at in the world so far. And the U.S. has 12 in actual service. So I would say it's probably pretty much certainly the dominant light cruiser design of the world in 1930. Uh, with the possible exceptions of whatever I'm about to see in Germany and Great Britain. Germany also has 12 light cruisers, but they only amount to 64,000 tons, which means they're a good deal lighter. One of them is the 20-year-old Thetis with two 5-inch guns, makes 28 knots. She's garbage. Totally useless. Amazon, three 5-inch guns, 28 knots. Also totally useless. Not even just against other cruisers, but honestly, both of these vessels are outgunned by a fair number of modern destroyers, and slower than them. And might have less armor than them which means that they're disastrously useless. I have no idea why they're still in service. To be fair, they were never great ideas, but I, don't, I have no idea why they're still in service now. Uh, they followed those with two Medusas, which with 10 5-inch guns, 27 knots. Uh, these are very early cruisers, and they're not going to be very effective in modern warfare. They might have been all right, for light cruiser duties at the time they were built in 1915. Uh, then they built the Berlin class of five, which are sort of their first real modern light cruisers with five six-inch guns on the center line, plus 29 knots. There's nothing uh, really wrong with them, except that they're of an old and outdated design now. They then built Gazelle, which is 8 5-inch guns, 30 knots. Dual purpose, though. Sorry, little interruption there. So the Gazelle class has 8 5-inch guns, 30 knots. It would... And the torpedo... It would be passable as a torpedo cruiser, although it's not that much faster than any other cruiser now, so... It would very definitely lose in a gun battle with most any other cruiser, modern cruiser. And most recently, about well, about the same time as we built the Junos, to be fair, they've built the two Nymphs with six six-inch guns, eight three-inch guns, 31 knots, 6,600 tons, eight above-water torpedo tubes. This is something like a torpedo cruiser or a just budget version of a Juno or something. It's not appallingly bad. I mean, it would, if it can get into torpedo range of other cruisers, it might have a very good shot against them. So I don't hate it, actually. It's not bad. And then finally, Britain has 15 light cruisers amounting to 90,000 tons, which at this point is America's main competition. Good God, they have enough capital ships to fill the entire first page there. Uh, the oldest is the Karakawa, 20 years old now, and she only makes 26 knots, which isn't great. However, with two twin and eight individual 6-inch turrets, she does still have an 8 6-inch gun and probably eight 4-inch gun broadside, which is equal to the very latest and greatest everywhere around the world. It's just that she's also slower, um but I couldn't necessarily call her ineffective in a gunnery duel. Just suboptimal, maybe. Uh, they followed those with the three Constance class, which are 28 knots, 5, 6-inch, 4, 3-inch guns. Uh, again, these are basically your standard early all-centerline light cruiser. And then they built 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the Carisford class, which don't have above-water torpedo tubes, so they don't have the excuse of being a torpedo cruiser for the fact that they only have 10 5-inch guns, and it looks to me like only two of them are center line. So these would be really, really outgunned in an engagement with 
Honestly, I'm fairly certain they would lose an engagement even with the immediately preceding Constance class, so I'm really not sure why the British built them, other than that maybe they're cheap and they needed colonial cruisers. Uh, then there's a... Oh, they built two more as well, so they have seven Kari spurts. Just in between, they built the one-off Amphion, which is 29 knots, seven six-inch guns, but it looks like only three of them are centerline, plus four three-inch, so... Call it a five-gun broadside. This I just don't understand, because they had demonstrated already with the Constance class that they could build five centerline six-inch guns, and that would just be more optimized in every way than Amphion here. So what this is doing existing, I don't know. And then their most recent class, less than five years old, Champion, Pallas, and Cleopatra. 30 knots, seven six-inch guns, and only Five of them are centerline, so basically call it a six six inch gun broadside, plus four four inch guns. They make thirty knots. No less than twelve above water torpedo tubes in I'm assuming four I think these are them, so I'm assuming four triple launchers, six to a side. Um so a six six inch gun broadside plus six torpedo broadside. Really not bad at all. It would still lose a gun duel with the likes of a Juno, but the torpedo power is quite impressive, so I don't have any particular objections to the champion class. They're quite nice. It's just that they only make up three out of the whole British force, and seven of them are the Carysford class, which is completely worthless, so... not Maybe not completely, but they make up the numbers at least. And, the, you know, a mixed in on a battle, they still have some contribution, but they're definitely not great. Uh, so then we move on to heavy cruisers, which were definitely a bit of an endangered breed ten years ago. I think they've been revived a bit by the AI building them in response to me, possibly. Uh, they definitely still have a place anyway. They just needed a new fast generation. Now, Spain actually has five of them. They've basically become the core of the Spanish fleet that's not its battleships, because they got no carriers and no battlecruisers. Uh, but five of them amounting to 107,000 tons, which is actually the third largest heavy cruiser force in the world. Just keep in mind that they have zero battlecruisers when evaluating that. Uh, plus, the first two of them, Pedro de Aragon and Alfonso the Twelfth, are 15 years old. Uh, they do make 28 knots, and they mount a bewildering mixture of 8 7-inch in four twin turrets, 8 6-inch, and 8 4-inch guns. For the fact that they're 13,600 tons which is almost every bit of what a very modern Brooklyn class is. Uh, the fact that they've got... Well, I'm still a little... They're kind of dangerous still, honestly. But 7-inch guns is not a super heavy caliber for a heavy cruiser. In fact, it's very light for a heavy cruiser. The fact that it also has 8 6-inch guns is quite impressive, though. So I wouldn't want to write it off completely, but I don't really think it's that good. I suspect this mixed armament might not work out that well in practice. Uh, more recently, they've built Reino Regente, Reino Mercedes, and Belleres, which are 20,000 ton heavy cruisers armed with 12 10-inch guns in four triple turrets, 14 5-inch guns, 6 4-inch guns, 5.5-inch belt, two spotter aircraft, and they make 31 knots. You know, in all fairness to Spain, I have to admit that these are very formidable heavy cruisers. Uh, very formidable indeed. The only real objection I have to them is that they're clearly basically taking the place of a battle cruiser in the Spanish order of battle, and they're still not as good as a battle cruiser. 10 inch guns, they'd be smashed by, by a modern battle cruiser with 16 inch or 14 inch even guns. But against any other, anything else in the world classified as a heavy cruiser, I suspect they would be 
pretty damned formidable, so... Some credit to Spain for how impressive their heavy cruiser force is. It's just their total lack of a battle cruiser force kind of is going to more than make up for that in most practical circumstances, probably. Uh, France has two heavy cruisers of 23,000 total tons. One of them, Guidon, 11,700 tons, 27 knots. Four 10-inch guns in turrets fore and aft, 14 6-inch guns and 12 4-inch guns, all in casemates or side turrets of some sort. Probably side turrets proper, not casemates, but still. Um, the four 10-inch guns are nice. The 14 6-inch guns are still a fair amount of firepower. I only see six of them, but... It, Well, in fact, yeah, where's the... That's an uneven number. There's six to a s side, and then where are the other two? I don't know, but... I mean, it's got a fair bit of firepower. It's not super fast for the modern era. It's obviously not going to be able to use that firepower in the very best fashion. It's still got a lot of gun power, but I think most modern cruisers, the most modern types of cruisers, would pretty comfortably beat it. Uh, including, probably honestly, Amaral Scharner here. 11,100 tons, 30 knots, 8 8-inch eight guns, 16 4-inch guns. This is a perfectly fine, quite a nice modern heavy cruiser. Um, most likely the 8 8-inch eight guns, if she stayed at a proper range judged the range correctly so as to stay out of the effective range of those 6-inch guns on Guidon, would probably be able to demolish Guidon from range. Uh, then Austria-Hungary has six heavy cruisers amounting to 90,000 tons, which is also a pretty heavy force for its size. Uh, one of those is the old Minerva of 13,000 tons, 4 10 inch, 14 6 inch, 4 3 inch, 28 ounce. This is basically Guidon. It has the same advantages of it does have a lot of guns, but also the same faults of not enough of the big heavy guns. And the 6 inch guns are all mounted in individual turrets by the look of it. So it's rather dated. What is not so dated are the five Kaiser Karl VI class, 29 knots, 9 10-inch guns in three triple turrets, 14 5-inch and six 4-inch guns, two spotter aircraft. Now these are thoroughly modern and really quite powerful. I'm relatively impressed by these. Clearly the AI has caught on a little more to my... Uh, caught up a little more to my designs in heavy cruisers than in light. Uh, there's nothing obviously wrong with these for me. I'm not... I'm not a super big fan of only having three turrets, because just of how much firepower you lose when you get hit in one of the turrets, but objectively, and the fact that they're 10-inch guns... This is quite a powerful heavy cruiser class, and they've got five of them in surface, so fair play to Austria. Italy has one single heavy cruiser, albeit that heavy cruiser oh, is not of that much weight. It's it's They've got another one building, that's why. Okay, One heavy cruiser of 11,600 tons, 28 knots, 6 8-inch and 8 6-inch guns, 12 4-inch guns. It's got sort of the same problem as like the Guidon type, but it's got even less heavy firepower. Although the extra two guns maybe makes it a wash, but this whole mixed armament structure is sort of the semi-dreadnought of the heavy cruiser world, and it's very much a thing of the past. It's not going to do well against the Kaiser Karl or Brooklyn-type all-heavy gun designs. Uh, France, we went over. Japan has... Eight heavy cruisers amounting to 110,000 tons, which is the second largest force in the world. Uh, two of them are the old... No, none of them are very old, actually. All built in the last decade. Two of them, the 
Iwate class with 10 10 inch, 10 6 inch, 6 4 inch guns, 28 knots, 6 inch belt. The obvious and unfortunate problem with this class is that only three of its guns are center line. So it does have an 8 10 inch gun broadside, so it's still very formidable, but it's very much wasting wasting tonnage and capacity and money by having wing turrets as though it's some sort of very early dreadnought instead of just all centerline turrets. I assume Japan couldn't do centerline turrets, four centerline turrets for heavy cruisers for some reason. But yeah, it's an issue. They followed that with the Yakumo class, 10,700 tons, 30 knots, eight 8 inch guns, four twin centerline turrets, 16 4 inch guns. This is sort of a very typical, uh, respectable modern heavy cruiser design. Basically, I have no objections at all to it. It's just not as large as some of the behemoths that are on the water now, but there's nothing at all wrong with it. Uh, and they followed that with the Kako class, 15,000 tons, 27 knots, 9 10-inch guns, 14 5-inch, 6 4-inch, 5-inch belt, 2 spotter aircraft. Obviously, the 9 10-inch guns is very formidable. The main problem with this class, if my intel is accurate, is the 27 knots is really rather slow. Even older battlecruisers are going to be able to catch up to this, and one of the essential things that allows heavy cruisers to exist in 1930 is that they have to be as fast or faster than battle cruisers. Um, this isn't, and so it's going to suffer, realistically. Russia has just one single heavy cruiser in service, the 15,000-ton Rossiya. 29 knots, 9 10-inch guns, 14 5, 6 4. I mean, we've seen basically this design before. The 10-inch guns are impressive. Uh, in fact, it's almost exactly the same as the last one we just looked at. Uh, but being able to make 29 knots does make her significantly better than the Japanese design in terms of survivability against the battle cruisers and other heavy ships of the world. Um, so I don't really have any problems at all with this design. It's not exactly how I'd do it. I'm, I'm surprised everyone has gone for 10-inch guns for their heavy cruisers. That's maybe putting a little too much into the heavy cruisers, you know? I think I started this trend by putting 9-inch guns on mine, though, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, the USA, of course, has currently... Five heavy cruisers amounting to, it'll actually be like 75,000 tons, but call it 90 since I've been reading the full tonnage for everybody else, uh, with one building. The five that are actually in service are the Brooklyn class, all built within the last decade. These are basically the archetype of, that everybody else is stealing for modern... Well, to be fair, I have hardly seen anybody build an exact replica of this, really. A lot of them have gone for triple 10-inch turrets. But uh, 28 knots, 8 9-inch, and 25-inch guns, a 6-inch belt, and 2-inch deck. She's got a lot of firepower, uh, especially compared to any of the heavy cruisers that followed her, or preceded her, in terms of all big guns. Uh, she has a very formidable secondary armament for dealing with light cruisers or destroyers. She's pretty well armored. She's not as fast as some of the very latest designs, which is a little concerning. Uh, but she's also not as overdone as some of them, in a sense. Still, some of those 9, 10-inch gun-armed ships out there would definitely beat the Brooklyn class, uh, which probably is reflective of the fact that she's almost 10 years old as a design now. Uh, however, it also is that there's five of her, and Russia, for instance, has one of their type. I think Japan did, too. And the very most modern ship in the U.S. arsenal, not yet completed, is the Rochester class, which by comparison, I believe has one inch less of belt, but half an inch more of deck armor, and, while carrying the same armament, makes 30 knots, which is going to make a substantial difference in terms of long-term survivability. So it's basically just a Brooklyn Mark II. And I think it pretty much corrects any of the flaws that age has brought into the Brooklyn design. 
Germany currently has six heavy cruisers amounting to 87,000 tons. Respectable, but not incredible as a force. Four of them are the Veneta class, which has... Okay, this is actually the closest thing to a Brooklyn clone that I have seen floating around. Eight 9-inch guns, 16 4-inch guns, 29 knots, 3.5-inch belt. It is slightly faster than the Brooklyn's. It's definitely a weaker secondary armament, although points for being dual purpose. And if that 3.5-inch belt is any indicator, the armor is probably weaker, although it m might have more deck armor. But then the low displacement suggests to me that it probably really is just significantly less armored, which could be a problem for it. Uh, then their most recent two ships are the Genizanao class, which have eight 10-inch guns, 16 4-inch, 28-ounce 4-inch belt. I'm not convinced that they went the right direction at all in trying to fix the flaws of Veneta. They did seemingly add at least a little bit of armor, uh, but they actually lost speed, and then they upped the size of the guns, which is going to make her more dangerous against other heavy cruisers, but the lower speed is probably the opposite of what was needed with the advance of technology. She's going to be more and more vulnerable to battle cruisers and the like. So I don't love it as much as I liked Veneta, actually. And then Britain, of course, here's a shocker, has the world's largest heavy cruiser force with nine heavy cruisers amounting to 122,000 tons. Three of those are the, all of them built in pretty much the last five years. Uh, three of them are the Niobe class, which has six 10-inch guns, 14 6-inch, six 6-4-inch, six 29 knots, 6-inch belt. Um, the only weakness relative to a Brooklyn type is that it's only got six main guns, uh, but Honestly, all those 6-inch guns probably does do enough to compensate that for that at most ranges. Although you shouldn't entirely discredit the 5-inch guns on the Brooklyn class either, so... I'm not really convinced this is superior to a Brooklyn. It's probably about 50-50. But it's not a bad design at all, to be clear. Uh, they followed that with the Amphitrite class of 3, which has... An extra knot of speed, and otherwise, I think, is pretty well identical. So this is just a slight upgrade at the cost of an extra 100 tons displacement. And then most recently, they've built the three-ship Creasy class, which has is more of a budget type, I think. Uh, eight 9-inch guns, 16... This is more like what Germany built. Eight 9-inch guns, 16 4-inch, 29 knots, 3-inch belt. Firepower-wise, more similar to the Brooklyn's although less secondary. The problem being, it, again, like the Germans, it looks like they've stripped a lot of armor off in order, in order to build it to that displacement, so I'm not too convinced about that. All right, now, at this moment in 1930, the battleships and battle cruisers are still kings of the ocean, but before we move on to them, we should take a look at the burgeoning uh, naval air arms around the world. Now, Spain has uh, has no naval air arm. Well, it does apparently have 90 naval aircraft in service. I think those are pretty much all land-based. Yeah. The only aviation ship Spain is even contemplating is a single 4,800-ton seaplane carrier, uh, which is not even complete yet, and might not even be building, or maybe we just don't have enough intel on Spain. But... Uh, they have basically no mobile na na naval air arm, and they have the least naval aircraft in general, even including land bases. So Spain is falling way behind in terms of doctrine, basically. France, which is the next largest navy, wildly enough, that's what losing a war will do to you. France does have a modern naval air arm. They have 337 naval aircraft in service, which is the fourth most, uh, but then they have one of, well, everybody's got about one carrier, but they've got a carrier. They have three light carriers, and those will amount to, and they have two uh, seaplane carriers, Ville du Havre and Ondine, 
from good deal earlier in this decade. Those, the seaplane carriers are what you'd expect. They have 26 knots, 14 aircraft, and 26 knots, 16 aircraft. Neither of them is exactly the terror of the seas, especially given they don't have actual flight decks at all. And they're pretty large for seaplane carriers, really. But they exist. I wouldn't consider them threats. Re well, they have a purpose still in just making up the numbers to get naval aircraft to colonial areas and such. But they're obviously going to lose to even a light carrier pretty much every time. Uh, however, they do have some of those. They have the two Automalches class, 27 knots, 28 aircraft, 8 6-inch and 8 4-inch guns, which is fairly heavy, but not uncommon on early carriers. Uh, the game literally makes you in many cases. I would say there's nothing wrong with this design. Well, 12,400 tons, 28 aircraft. I never really designed my own light carrier as such. I would say it's not bad. We'll c have to compare it to others, maybe, but seems to me it's reasonable. And then the Louvre class, 14,500 tons, 32 aircraft, and makes 30 knots. Uh, probably a worthwhile upgrade, mostly for the speed rather than the aircraft, uh, for an extra 2,000 tons. And then the pride of the French naval air arm, Bairn. 17,700 tons, 29 knots, 49 aircraft capacity, also 8 6-inch and 10 4-inch guns. The 4-inch guns are at least dual purpose, so I can see some justification on those. It's not a huge aircraft carrier, but it's a functioning aircraft carrier, which honestly is what really counts at this point in time. Mm. We can't really see the exact details of all their naval aircraft, but... Uh, their fighter, apparently of choice, is a Moraine Saulnier MS-54, uh, which is about four years old, so that's not ideal. Uh, speed 145, power 2. Okay, so the modern U.S. aircraft are faster, but similar in firepower. Uh, 140 and 4. Yeah, their tech is not terrible at all, but it's a bit behind the U.S. in terms of aircraft, I would think by the looks of it um then austria hungary surprisingly 172 total naval aircraft means they don't have that many ground bases but surprisingly an oddly formidable mobile arm with four light carriers in service plus one actual carrier and they're building two more actual carriers where they're using these when they only operate in the adriatic i don't know but and aside from that, they also have no less than four seaplane carriers in surface. Rosalia L with five aircraft and only 1,900 tons, to the 3,200-ton Emma with eight aircraft, to the 14-aircraft Constantin, and the 16-aircraft Elephant of 9,100 9, tons. Uh, why they have... Well, never mind those. Those are one thing. They also have the four-ship Muve class, uh, Falca, Cormorant, and Zay Adler, of light carriers, 26 aircraft, 8,100 tons, only 24 knots, which is kind of slow, but they're very low displacement, and they get a decent number of aircraft out of it, and I shouldn't think they have to move fast in the Adriatic, really, so... I just don't see how building these is cheaper than building air bases for the fact that they're unlikely to ever really leave the Straits of Otranto. Um, but anyway, most recently... ooh, And then they've also built the carrier Condor, which I can't help but notice for being 14,600 tons and makes 30 knots. It also only carries 26 aircraft, and... Okay, yes, it's a great deal faster, but... For adding 6,500 tons, I mean, almost doubling the size of the design, I really feel like you'd want to carry more aircraft. Yeah, you know? That, I don't think that's a very great design for a full fleet carrier. Although they are building two more, Prague and Krakow, of 20,000-something tons, which might be more formidable. Italy presently has 
166 total naval aircraft, which is one of the smaller forces in the world, and they have one light and one fleet carrier in service, plus two seaplane carriers, the five aircraft Camasio and the 14 aircraft Capriolo. Now, their seaplane, or their light carrier is the 10,700 ton Centoro, 28 knots, 30 aircraft. And then their main carrier is the 17,000 ton Astore, 28 knots, 50 aircraft, which both seem fine in action, which both seem statistically fine. However, I am very curious about this generated shape of Astore. Why is it a blimp? Am I crazy? Um, <laughs> it's got such a pointed bow, including of the flight deck. Quite unusual. But if it works, it works. So, good for Italy. Uh, then after them we have Japan. Japan has very much embraced naval aviation. They actually have the second largest force of naval aircraft in the world, with over 400 in service in total. And although they're maybe very slightly behind the trend in fleet carriers, they have six light carriers in service, which is quite impressive. Uh, besides which, they also have five uh, seaplane carriers, albeit all of them only carry five aircraft apiece, so they're not exactly titans. Uh, however, well, after building the experimental sea, uh, light carrier Ryujo back in 1923, 29 knots, 11,600 tons, 31 aircraft, which is in itself not terrible, they then proceeded to apparently perfect the design with the five uh, Chitose class, Chitose, Taiyo, Shoho, Chuyo, and Ryuho, which are 14,500 tons, 30 knots, 32 aircraft, plus 8 6 inch and 8 4 inch dual purpose guns. I can't, well, they're fairly large for only carrying 32 aircraft. I'm not sure why they're so much heavier than Ryujo, in fact, but they're definitely very functional light carriers, and they're a good composite force and they've got them in a large number so definitely Japan's building up a force to be reckoned with there and then most recently they've built Zuiho well actually Zuiho is built prior to all the Chitose class which is interesting 30 knots, 16,100 tons 31 aircraft okay so this is an interesting case where they built an early experimental full-sized carrier, maybe a conversion or something. Although, yeah, it could be. I don't know what Zoiho would have been before. Feels like that's one of their carrier names, though maybe I'm crazy about that. Um, but the fact that it's heavier and has no advantages that I can really see over the Chitose's and has one less aircraft... I'm thinking Zoiho is not that impressive. It clearly these five light carriers, the real core of the Japanese strike force at the moment. And to be fair, that's uh, 9,628 aircraft they've got that they can put into the air just from those five. So that's not too shabby. Russia. Russia has a healthy complement of naval aircraft in total, but I believe they are a bit behind in terms of the trend actually at sea. They do have a few uh, seaplane carriers, Vilna and Ryazan with five aircraft, Bryansk with 14, and Kursk and Tver with 16. Uh, and then they have a couple of, I'm fairly certain these are converted early battle cruisers. I could be wrong, but I don't actually think I am. Uh, they've got a couple of battle cruiser conversion light carriers, I think. Navarine class, 25 knots, 20, 19,700 tons. They only carry 16 aircraft, which is not great at all. It's really quite bad for the size that they are. Yeah, That is what happens when you do conversions, though. It's just sort of 
necessary. I mean, with the fact that it still has a six inch belt and all that. Um, but neither of these is a very good aircraft carrier, really. And although they've now, in 1930, embarked on a more ambitious program, building three Shguli class light carriers and three Kazan class full size carriers. None of those are actually operational right now, so at the moment their fleet air arm is quite weak. That being said, I can't really talk, because the US air arm... Well, okay. In terms of number of aircraft, is the second smallest in the world. That in itself I'm not so worried about, because almost the vast majority of the aircraft everyone else is operating are off of land bases, which it just doesn't make that much sense for the US to have a lot of given most of its coastline is so far away from enemy territory compared to if you're operating in the Mediterranean or the North Sea or something. But uh, the U.S. naval air arm as a whole, in terms of floating vessels, is also in a bit of a... It's just a bit behind the trend. We have no currently active... Didn't we have one seaplane carrier? Maybe I scrapped it already. Okay, we have no currently active seaplane carriers. We have a single conversion light carrier, San Diego, a former cruiser... Uh, which, 9,000 tons, only makes 24 knots, only carries 14 aircraft. It's strictly an experimental test bed. So in terms of ships actually in the water, the U.S. Naval Aviation Program is actually probably the worst in the world. However, in my defense, that doesn't really in any statistical way, just having that one is enough that in no statistical way is our R&D actually held up. And... Carriers were not actually the decisive force at any point in the 1920s. And the U.S. is now building USS Langley, Wasp, Yorktown, and Hornet, four full-size fleet carriers of 21,400 tons, 30 knots, 8 6-inch, and 10 dual-purpose 4-inch guns, carrying 60 aircraft apiece. I believe these are the largest and highest capacity carriers in the world right now. We'll see what Germany and Britain are building. But, although not yet complete, once complete, these will immediately give the U.S. 240 uh, mobile na naval aircraft, which will make us one of the absolute top contenders in that sphere. I don't believe anybody else has that many laid down or building yet, no. So, as soon as those are complete, which will be within a matter of within the year, uh, the U.S. will be extremely comparable. Well, actually, we'll just have the largest carrier force in the world from almost nothing, so. Not a concern, but as of January 1930, the U.S. force is quite weak. Germany, on the other hand, has gone, for whatever reason, absolutely all in on carriers. Uh, I mean, not all in, perhaps, that's an exaggeration, but they have built the largest carrier force in the world by a significant margin right now, and they have the most naval aircraft in the world, exceeding Britain, with no less than eight light and three fleet carriers in service at the moment, plus four seaplane carriers, uh, the Bruder Jurgens with five aircraft, Kolbrand and Roostringen with eight, and Henriette with 16. Aside from which, they have... One early experimental light carrier, which is definitely a battle cruiser conversion, the 28,000-ton Graf Spee, uh, 25 knots, 19 aircraft only it carries for being, I think, probably the biggest aircraft carrier afloat. Obviously, it's not a very good aircraft carrier, but you have to temper that with the knowledge that it is 100% a conversion, and of just a very early experimental design. You can sort of almost discount it from the effective German force. Uh, they followed that some years later with two Rhine-class light carriers of only 22 knots, but only 8,100 tons, and they carry 26 aircraft apiece. So for operations in the North Sea, they probably will do just fine. I don't know that they would do well in independent operations with that kind of, well, it's a bit of a 
Catch-22 that, though. They wouldn't do well in independent operations with that kind of speed, but they also can't keep up with a modern fleet with that kind of speed, so that's a little painfully slow, let's be honest. Um, however, they followed the Rhines with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Orsonia class, Orsonia, Salzach, Jade, Sventine, and Fields, which 14,200 tons, they make 30 knots, carry 32 aircraft, they're pretty typical 8 6 inch and 8 dual purpose 4 inch guns, these pretty much fix all the flaws with their previous experimental carriers and are, well basically they're your bog standard light carriers for the moment, but they're quite a formidable force uh, so far as 1930 carriers go. Especially when one considers the full-sized fleet carriers Graf Zeppelin, Peter Strasser, and von der Tann, which 16,800 tons make 29 knots, 8 6-inch and 12 dual-purpose 4-inch guns, and carry 44 aircraft. Uh, they are a knot slower, which is annoying, and I would not have made that choice, but uh, for an extra 2,600 tons, they carry an extra 12 aircraft apiece and are otherwise pretty much compatible. So that's, you know, 120, and there's something like on the order of 280 aircraft Germany can loft from modern fast carriers. Yeah, that's quite an impressive force. And then finally, Great Britain. Third largest uh, fleet air arm currently. They have three light carriers and two fleet carriers in service. Uh, which they also have a number of old seaplane carriers. Baron Blantyre with five, Tom Roper with eight, and Nuceria and Suntrap with 14. Those are all quite obsolete, but uh, in terms of light carriers, they have the two Biter class, 11,200 tons, 29 knots, 8 6-inch, 8 dual-purpose 4-inch, 31 aircraft. Pretty Typical, just maybe slightly below average light carriers, since 31 aircraft when 32 seems to be the standard, and not quite 30 knots, but objectively that knot and that aircraft, they're unlikely to make a real difference in combat. However, for what it's worth, they then did build Dasher, which has the 32 aircraft and the 30 knots, and is functionally pretty much identical, I think, to every other uh, light carrier in, say, the German or Japanese arsenals. However, they've only got one of her, coupled with the two biters, so three in total, of course, but not spectacular. Uh, that said, we do have to account for the fleet carriers Eagle and Argus. 18,600 tons, 26 knots, 8 6-inch, 10 dual-purpose 4-inch guns. They carry 56 aircraft apiece. Uh, the concern would be that they only make 26 knots, which is pretty slow. But 56 aircraft is a lot. I believe the only carrier I've seen with more is my new um, Langley class. So they've most definitely got to be taken into consideration in the British Naval Air Arm, which altogether has about, and, about 200 aircraft, which is not bad at all. And they're building an additional dasher... That said, they will fall behind the U.S. once it's got its four finished shortly. And now, finally, we move on to the current kings of the waves. Well, the battle cruisers and then the battleships. Spain, as previously mentioned, has zero battle cruisers. They have completely abandoned the type. They do have several of these heavy cruisers, which are just gargantuan, easily the biggest in the world, and are probably not bigger than any battlecruiser that's... They're painfully close to being bigger than some battlecruisers that are still in service, actually. I don't know if this Gobin would actually convincingly beat one of these Rhino Regentes. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced at all, actually. Um, but modern, large battlecruisers would convincingly destroy them. Uh, France also has zero battlecruisers in service. I believe they had one still during the recent war, but 
it's now zero. I think they scrapped her rather than losing her outright, but uh, let me see if I can scroll through here. Oh, PC's after PP in this, isn't it? It doesn't even say. I would have sworn they had more than two at some point, too. Oh, no, that's the year they were built. Maybe it was one of these, then. Anyway. Good grief. There we go. No battle cruisers for France at the moment. And the type is less common than it used to be, for sure. There's not that many new ones being built anymore. Um... Which is interesting, because nobody ever really learned the World War One lesson that they'll blow up too easily in this timeline. They're just being slowly phased out anyway, for some reason. To some extent. I mean, I'm building a new one right now, but I'm the only one, so... Uh, after France, we have Austria-Hungary, which has one single battlecruiser. The Tyrol, which is 20 years old. It makes 23 knots. It's 19,800 tons. It's got eight 12-inch guns, and obviously only six of them bear, and it has a four-and-a-half-inch belt. This thing is garbage. I'm not even actually convinced that there aren't several modern heavy cruisers that could beat this thing in a fight, especially considering it has nigh on no armor. Any battle cruiser in my arsenal would destroy it with just complete ease. I have worse, it's not even faster than most modern battleships. I have no idea why this thing is still in the Austrian arsenal, honestly. It's not useful anymore. Uh, beyond them, Italy. Italy have gone exactly the opposite route of our first three countries I just mentioned. Italy have gone, have genuinely actually gone all in into battlecruisers. As you can see, they have twice as many battlecruisers as they do battleships, and they've pretty much had that since the start of the Dreadnought era. Um, that said, a lot of them are aging now, but not all. Uh, they do have a new class built in the last decade. Uh, the oldest three of their fleet now are Lepanto, Francisco Morosini, and Attilio Regolo from 1912. These are 20,400 tons, 27 knots, which at least makes them a little viable by speed still. But with 8 12-inch and 8 5-inch guns and a 6-inch belt, uh, these are another class that, okay, at least they're still fast enough to outrun most battleships. Uh, but in combat against an actual modern battlecruiser, they would be mincemeat. Just uselessly were destroyed. Uh, then they have... Italian Napoli, Pompeo Magno, and Amaraglio saint Pom of the Italia class, which make up another four. Uh, these are better, to be sure. 28 knots, 27,000 tons, 8 12-inch guns in four twin turrets, so they actually all bear, and a 12-inch belt. These are not horribly useless in the way that the last couple of battle cruisers we've looked at were but they're definitely not I mean anything with 14 or 16 inch guns probably is still just going to tear them to pieces at least however they are pretty well armored and pretty fast still so these are still quite a menace for say heavy cruisers or the like they're not useless uh, and then most recently we have the Francesco Caracciolo class, including that, plus Roma and Regina Elena. These are the one modern battlecruisers, the, the three modern battlecruisers in the Italian inventory. 37,300 tons, 28 knots, 8 15-inch guns in four twin turrets, plus 14 16, 6-inch and 8 dual-purpose 4-inch guns, a 12-inch belt, Nothing is really objectively wrong with this design or anything. Um, except that I honestly... Well... Yeah, nothing is objectively wrong with this design. It's just not probably as strong as the very latest battlecruisers built alongside it. 
I mean, the American equivalent in age is probably something like the Constellation class, which is basically similar in most regards, to be fair, except with 16-inch guns, which is just that little difference to suggest that the Italians are a little bit behind uh, technologically, perhaps. Especially as the Constellations also have lower tonnage. Um, but it's not a bad design, to be fair to Italy. Not a bad design. But the others are well obsolete by this point. Uh, Japan is down to only three battle cruisers, uh, amounting to 80,000 tons. And those are Tsukuba and Kuruma, Kurama of the Tsukuba class from 1913, with eight 14 inch guns, 16 6 inch, 8 3 inch. Uh, they make 25 knots and an 8.5 inch belt. They're a little under-armored, even by, well, I've set a bit of a trend of heavily armored battlecruisers in this world, because I think the ones that are real glass cannons are just a huge potential waste of money, uh, as was pretty much proved by Britons in World War I. Um, so these are kind of under-armored, kind of slow. Their gun layout is not ideal. There's nothing hugely wrong with them. They're just really showing their age at this point, more than 15 years after having been built. Um, and the same is pretty much true of the immediate follow-up Congo, which has an extra knot of speed and is otherwise pretty much identical. These probably are still worth keeping in Japan's order of battle, but they're not fantastic. Uh, Russia has the world's third largest battlecruiser force, with seven, totaling 264,000 tons. The oldest is Kinburn from 1914, 28,500 tons, only makes 24 knots, 7.5-inch belt, but 12 14-inch guns in four triple turrets. Not to be laughed at, even in 1930, Albeit the layout, in which two of them apparently have to blow the ship's superstructure apart in order to bear anything close to directly fore and aft, maybe is to be laughed at a little bit. So, I wouldn't exactly call it a genius piece of engineering, but it's not totally worthless either, probably. Uh, four years later, we have Ochakov, which is 32,400 tons. So that's an extra 4,000 tons. However, if you'll bear with me a moment, I'm trying to see what else is... Oh, it's got an extra four knots of speed. It's got an inch of belt armor. So it's better. I mean, okay. The speed is essential, actually, because Kinburn is not substantially faster than modern battleships, which is a problem for her, for sure. Uh, Achikov is at least fast enough to still be comparable to modern battlecruisers there. However, against most of the other battlecruisers with 28 knots, her armament is going to start to really look a little weaker, and her armor is still not exactly spectacular. Another five years later, and they built Fokshani, which 32,600 tons, makes 30 knots, 8.5 inch belt, 8 14 inch guns in four twin turrets, they managed to make one of them super firing, but one of them is still going to... This one has really restricted firing angles without blowing apart superstructure, honestly. They should probably work on that over in Russia, but I think their tech is too far behind. Though that's alarmingly far behind that they didn't have all super firing guns by then, but welcome to Russia, I guess. It's fast enough. And well-armed and armored enough to not be garbage, but it's not exactly genius either. In the last few years, they've built Rimnik, Chesma, Houghton, and Kronstadt, a four-ship class of very large modern battlecruisers, 42,700 tons, 30 knots, nine 16-inch guns, plus 14 4-inch, and six dual-purpose 3-inch, a 12-and-a-half-inch armor belt, it's fast, it's well-armored, it's well-armed. Honestly, the only objection I have to the Rimnik class is that they still haven't figured out how to put their last gun in without having it annihilate their own bridge every time it fires. 
it, this could have been a Nelson if you just put this here and the bridge here. Uh, but no, Russia does not have the engineering capacity to figure that out, apparently. So we get this, which is not bad. It's just clearly compromised. It's quite heavy for what it represents. I'm really not convinced. It's probably It probably is marginally better than a constellation, but not by, like, a huge margin. And it's 6,000 tons heavier and 10 years newer. And I don't think that it probably is better than a Congress, which is my contemporary rival, so. It's not terrible, though. Not terrible. Um, and then, well, then the U.S. Currently, once had six battlecruisers, now has five due to war losses, amounting to 210,000 tons, which is the fourth largest force in the world. Uh, well, the 210,000 tons includes the Under Construction Congress, um, our old ships are the Saratoga and Ranger, which at 29,000 tons and 28 knots have eight 14 inch guns in four twin turrets, 14 5 inch, an 11 inch belt, and the 2 inch deck. The armor is pretty good for a battlecruiser, but not spectacular. There are numerous better armored battlecruisers out there now. Obviously, the armament doesn't compare to the most modern 16-inch guns. In all summary, the class does need to be replaced by a more modern battlecruiser force. But, for the fact that it's f over 15 years old, it's still holding up relatively well. The armor is still not bad, the speed is still not terrible. Even the armament, honestly, obviously doesn't compare to 9 16-inch guns, but is not abysmal. And then that's followed by the three Constellation-class vessels, USS Constellation, Constitution, and Independence. 36,300 tons, 28 knots, 8 16-inch guns in four twin turrets, 25-inch, a 12-inch belt in the 2.5-inch deck. It's pretty much earlier battleship grade armor. Uh, the speed is still very solid, albeit there are some 30-knot battlecruisers out there now, but it's not abysmal. Uh, the armament is still very respectable. Are there some hyper-modern designs, like Rimnik, that definitely threaten this? Yes. Um, on the other hand, against a lot of those older junk battlecruisers, this thing would just absolutely chew through them. And a lot of battlecruisers don't have anywhere near this much armor, so... I think the Constitution class, or the Constellation class, still holds up pretty well for being 10 years old. Obviously, at some point, it will need replacing, but... The current candidate for that would be Congress, which is being built to replace the one battlecruiser we lost. Uh, not in service yet, but she amounts to 43,500 tons, makes 30 knots, 8 16-inch guns in 4 twin turrets. I did consider a sort of Nelson all-forward arrangement or some other 3 triple turret thing, but... Mm, call me overly conservative, but I decided against it. 22 5-inch guns, 12-inch belt, 4-inch deck, which is uh, actually the big upgrade there. That cost a lot of weight uh, compared to the Constellations, but it will make it much more survivable in 1930s-era combat. That's actually more important than the belt at this point. And overall, I would say this can very much still tangle with any battlecruiser in the world with a fair degree of success. I haven't seen anything that I would say is definitely better than Congress. There are some more heavily armed things. I don't think there's any with great armament layouts and that have equal armament, armor, and speed. Uh, Germany has five battlecruisers of 135,000 tons, and I believe they're all rather old. Uh, the real standouts are Goben and Seidlitz of the Moltke class. These are like original generation or second generation battlecruisers or something. 20,600 tons, 24 knots, 8 11-inch guns in four twin turrets, and they're using cross-deck fire, plus 10 6-inch, 6 16 dual-purpose 3-inch, 10-inch belt. 
I'm pretty sure that in 1910, I thought these were quite good battle cruisers. In 1930, they are not. They're pretty hopeless, actually. Um, obviously, any battle cruiser in the U.S. inventory would demolish them. So would most of the Russian ones. Well, only the newest Russian ones, to be fair. But yeah, these are not very good anymore. Uh, the successor is the 28,000 ton Lutzo of 25 knots. Eight 14 inch guns. Uh, one of the turrets is four twin turrets, one of which is weirdly placed, but could be worse. Eight and a half inch belt. This is much less hopeless. Um, it's not as good as a Saratoga, for instance, which is the contemporary rival, basically, but uh, the armament isn't as well laid out, and it's slower and less armored. But. It's not hopeless, it's just not good anymore. Uh, their more modern ships are basically amount to two. SMS Mackinson from 1917, which is rubbish because it's 30,800 tons, 27 knots, built in 1917. And it's 10 13-inch guns in five twin turrets are arrayed in a cross-deck fire layout, which means it's really only got eight 13-inch guns that bear at most angles and weight, and, well, the 12-inch belt's quite nice, so, you know. I wouldn't really bet on it to beat Lutzo, though. It's just, this is a really suboptimal layout, and they're only 13 and not 14-inch guns. Their only really modern battlecruiser is Forst Bismarck from 1923. Uh, 35,400 tons, 30 knots, Eight 16-inch guns, although still kind of a weird layout. 16 5-inch and 6 3-inch dual-purpose. 9.5-inch belt. It's a solid armament, albeit not well laid out because of this center thing. The armor is not as good as on mine, so... I... Just because of the weight of guns, it would probably be to Saratoga class. It would not be to Constellation class, I am fairly confident. Uh, so I'm not too impressed by Germany's battle cruiser force, especially given two out of their five are just so ancient as to be almost useless. However, the very largest battle cruiser force in the world is the Royal Navy's, with twelve battle cruisers amounting to three hundred and thirty thousand tons. Unfortunately, from all I've ever seen of them, they are all trash. Uh, the oldest is the one surviving incomparable HMS Indefatigable with 18,200 tons, 25 knots, 8 12-inch guns in a cross-deck fire type arrangement, plus 8 dual-purpose 4-inch guns, a 5-inch belt. They're 12-inch guns. They're cross-deck firing. And she's got less armor than several of modern heavy cruisers that I've seen. This ship is garbage. Um, it's not... It's just walking cannon fodder. Steaming cannon fodder, that is. And the four following New Zealands, Illustrious, Tiger, Australia, and Lion, are not really much any better. 20,600 tons, 25 knots, 8 12-inch and 8 5-inch dual-purpose guns, 6.5-inch belt... They're also cross-deck firing, and they also have 12-inch guns. They have an extra inch and a half of belt armor, but honestly, that's still so little belt armor that it's unlikely to make any impression on modern battleship or battlecruiser caliber guns, capital ship caliber guns. They're pretty much also steaming cannon fodder, and the 25 knots is just barely faster than some of the modern battleships, so not overly impressive. They entered a new generation with HMS Queen Mary, which at 28,100 tons, 28 knots, and 10 15-inch guns is certainly a lot more formidable, but this thing is the definition of glass cannon with a 6.5-inch belt, and... Don't even begin to ask me why the Brits have done this. It still uses cross-deck firing. It's got 15-inch guns, and it was built in 1917. And it's cross-deck firing. 
it's not... I mean, I shouldn't underestimate them too much because they have a lot of firepower, but they've got no armor, and it's not a good layout. I mean, you can basically say they have eight 15-inch guns to a side, um, which is a fair amount, but then the armor is still a glaring weakness. Um, and unfortunately, this is a problem Britain did not give up on with the following HMS Invincible, Indomitable, and Princess Royal... Which at 27,600 tons, 26 knots, with 10 16 inch, 16 inch guns, still cross deck firing, and a 6.5 inch belt. These are all kinds of flawed. Yes, they have an enormous amount of firepower, enough as much as any modern battleship, basically, still. First of all, it's cross deck firing. Second of all, they have no armor. And third of all, they're not even very fast for battle cru They're really rather slow for battle cruisers built as late as these were. Most modern battle cruisers are a good deal faster than that, 28 to 30 knots. So there are just all kinds of problems with these. Their most recent designs have finally corrected all that, and these are the first British battle cruisers in a long while that I'm actually concerned about. HMS Courageous, Inflexible, and Furious. 39,500 tons, 30 knots, 8 16-inch guns in 4 twin turrets, actually all centerline and super firing and very nice and pretty, 14 6-inch guns, 6 dual-purpose 4-inch guns, an 11.5-inch belt. Out of all the British battlecruisers, these are the only ones that are actually going to survive more than 10 minutes in a modern battle. Um, they're the only ones that don't have an obvious design problem. They're quite nice. Uh, these are pretty much... Pretty close to being on even... I actually think there's a good chance that my constellations are still better. It's hard to say how much armor they have, because the deck is going to be important, too. They're very comparable to my constellation class in terms of actual combat power, I think. So these are quite nice. The rest of them, however... Are not. Now, okay, they have 12 of them to my 5, which still means their battlecruiser force is pretty much guaranteed to be more powerful than mine, or the US's, if it came down to just a shooting engagement between the two battlecruiser forces, nothing else. But in single ship actions, all of theirs but courageous are not going to fare well. And finally, that will bring us on to the battleships. Still the most numerous battle. Uh, capital ships in the world, really by a larger margin than in 1920, probably. Still the kings of the ocean at this moment, although that will start to change more significantly over the next decade. Spain has the smallest fleet in the world, but over half of that tonnage is in its battleships. Uh, they have the old Trident and the Reina Dona Isabel II, which... Well, let's be the honest. These are gun targets for most modern battleships. They're 18,000 tons, 20 knots, 10 12-inch guns, cross-deck firing, and an 8-inch belt. Woefully under-armored. -arm quite slow. Not hideously so, but slow. And very bad gun layout, plus just not a good gun power for 1930. Abysmal. San Miguel and Numancia the first, 22,200 tons, 20 knots, 10 12 inch guns, 9 inch belt. Look, these are probably better. They've got the wing turret thing with, well. The funny thing is, no matter how much I've insulted cross deck fire, technically this still has a 10 12 inch gun broadside if you get it at the right angle. This has guaranteed only an 8 12-inch gun broadside, so it's actually less firepower. It's a worse layout still. Uh, it does have slightly more armor. Slightly. It's really not much better. It's still quite bad. Uh, then Almirante Oquendo and Alejandro I. Uh, these were built in 1917. 26,900 tons, 23 knots. 8 12-inch guns, which hideously and weirdly three of them are I believe that's 
I'm really pretty sure that's aft. Am I crazy? What can I look at where I can tell that easily? These would suggest strongly that that's aft, yeah. Yeah, so with these. Okay, that's definitely aft, yeah. Um, and who, where are they? There we are. Who puts an all forward armament is one thing. An all aft armament is just confusing. It does not make sense. Uh, plus, it's only 12-inch guns. The speed is good. The armor is really not bad, especially for the era, but definitely still not a very strong battleship. Uh, they followed that seven years later with San Francisco, De Paula, Argonauta, and San Telmo, which are their most modern three battleships. These were built only five years ago. 27,600 tons, 23 knots, Nine 13-inch guns in three triple turrets, plus 16 fives and four threes in dual-purpose mounts. 12.5-inch belt. The speed is fine. The armor is uh, behind the times by 1925, but not absolutely worthless. However, by 1925, the nine 13-inch guns is just laughable. I don't know if that's the biggest guns Spain has or what, but nobody else is building 13-inch gun battleships in 1925. 16 inches was pretty much the universal standard across the major powers by then. Um, uh, this isn't even clearly that much better than their 12-inch gun battleships for an extra almost 10 years of development. It's not good. Spain has a lot of battleships. They are woefully... Well, this backward thing? Yeah, they're not lying. Spain is backward. Their ships are problematic at best. France also has nine battleships. And honestly, it's the beating they took to this force that is, I think, probably the largest reason why they are where they are in the fleet tonnage listings. Although, yeah, well, that and their lack of battlecruisers. So, yeah, essentially. Um... The oldest still in service is the Bouvet class Republique. 18,900 tons, 19 knots, 12 11 inch guns, 14 6 inch, 12 3 inch, dual purpose, and an 11 inch belt. Uh, the Republique class. Sorry, there was another interruption there. The Republiques with. Well. Look, their speed is bad, noticeably so, at least two knots less than the standard. Their armor is mediocre, and their guns are... I mean, they have eight 11-inch guns to a broadside, but obviously this layout is terrible. Uh, these are very bad. They're very obsolete. They're not good. Uh, then there's Patri and Messina from, well, just barely afterwards, effectively. Must have been the next class laid down. 25,300 tons, 18 knots, 12 13-inch guns, plus 8 fives, 9 inch belt. Uh, this class also is just filled with flaws. Um, I mean, it's got 10 13-inch guns to a broadside, which is quite nice, really, for 1913. Not bad at all. Uh, on the other hand, 18 knots is a good three knots slower than what's standard for dreadnoughts. And the armor is quite poor, much worse even than on the uh, Bouvet, so it's not good. It's not good either. Let's not lie to ourselves. Uh, another couple of years later, they built Suffren of the Charles Martel class. I think that she's the last survivor of this class. There were more before. 30,000 tons, 20 knots, 9 14-inch guns, and 3 triple turrets, 11.5-inch belt. Uh, speed is mediocre, but fine. Armor is mediocre, but fine. The 9 14-inch guns is not bad for the time. Obviously, it's a little behind now, but it's not bad for the time. The layout is kind of questionable. But this, at least, is not worthless. Um, however, they followed that two years later with what you'd call the first of their modern line, at least it's surviving. 
Normandy, 30,800 tons, 22 knots, 12 16-inch guns in four triple turrets, and a 9.5-inch belt. This one's actually a little faster than average. It's insanely well-armed. I don't, I still don't, I don't know if anybody's got a heavier armed battleship than this. I don't think so. Uh, however, armor is obviously rather bad. And the layout of these guns is not actually great either. They have what seems to be the common problem where they're going to blow their own superstructure up. Uh, four years later, they'd advanced that design to Danton and Courbet. 32,200 tons, 21 knots. Nine 16 inch guns in three triple turrets, plus an 11 inch belt. It's a normal speed. It's just mediocre, but not horrible armor. The nine 16 inch guns is a good armament, except for the fact that one of them is in the middle of the ship again. It's not awful. I'm not terrified of it either, though. Uh, another couple of years later, they built... There were several more Paris class than this, but there's only one left. Bretagne. 34,500 tons, 24 knots. Armed with nine 16-inch guns and three triple turrets. 20... Uh, I said 24 knots, but... 12-inch uh, belt. It's fast. It's fairly well armored. The armament is good. Just, again, weird layout. I think... The war showed pretty clearly that the Paris class was probably a little too fragile and had trouble actually bringing their full gunnery into effect, but uh, their solution to it post-war <clears throat> so far, and they've only built one battleship since then, is a Diderot, 39,700 tons, 23 knots, Nine 16 inch guns in an all forward armament, three triple turrets, 12 inch belt. To be fair, a much more modern solution to the problem of where to put those three triple 16 inch turrets, and probably a better balance of speed and armor. This is probably better than Paris class, yeah. This is not a bad modern dreadnought necessarily at all. There's nothing objectively really wrong with it. I still think the I think the armor's a little weak for a very modern dreadnought, honestly, but uh, could be worse. So that's not terrible, but it's about the only battleship in the French fleet that isn't either too old or has been proven to not work that well. They're building another smaller ship, the Makrati. I don't know why they're going backwards in size. Uh, from there, we move over to Austria, Hungary which also has nine battleships, albeit only of 267,000 tons. Uh, the oldest is Babenberg from 1913. 21,800 tons, 22 knots, nine 14-inch guns, and three triple turrets, 11-inch belt. Honestly, this is quite nice. For the, I mean, having two of the turrets at the stern is weird, but uh, fast enough. Decent-ish armor. Pretty solid armament for 1913. I don't have any real objections to this class. And they followed those with four Erzerhog Franz Ferdinands. Erzerhog Franz Ferdinand, Kron, Princessen, Erzerhogin, Stephanie, Jano Sunyari, and, uh, and Jano Sunyaki. Oh, there's three. Okay. Uh, 28,700 tons, 22 no uh, 20 knots, 10 14 inch guns in two triple, two twin turrets, actually all super firing, 12 and a half inch belt. Look, it's slightly slower than average, but. The armor is good, the armament is good, and actually laid out recently. I'm more impressed by this than almost anything I've seen from any of the alleged, like, major naval powers. In terms of battle cruisers or battleships so far. And they followed that in 1919 with Erzurg Karl and Kaiser. Which, 32,000, oh, they ruined it. 30,000 tons, 21 knots, 10 15-inch guns in... Two triple, two twin turrets, 12-inch belt. The speed is still fine. The armor is still fine. They've put one of the twin turrets in the middle of their ship again. Why on earth would they not just copy this layout? 
it would have been such a good ship if they'd copied that layout, but now they've ruined it. It's not good anymore, yeah. Um, they followed that with Budapest, which is 31,600 tons, 23 knots, nine 15-inch guns, and three triple turrets, and a 12.5-inch belt. I mean, I will say to the credit of the Austrians, all of their ships I've seen so far, uh, battleship-wise, fast enough or more than fast enough, quite well armored, and a good armament, honestly, con compared to their contemporaries, but again, this one does suffer from it's really weirdly laid out, just why. I know you have a super firing turrets unlocked. I've literally seen them on previous ships of yours. Why is one of them here? And then they immediately built Arpod, which is identical except for being a lot faster, I think. Yeah. Which, you know, if you. I mean, that's fine, but not spectacular. Oh, wait. It's not identical. Except for being enough faster. It's also got 16-inch guns, which is a fair upgrade. So this is definitely better, and I'm astonished they managed to do it on only an extra 100 tons on the hull. Kind of makes me wonder what else they might have compromised, considering it was built the same year. But, um... This is pretty powerful, then. I just still don't like the layout, but it's pretty powerful. And most recent is Slavonian. 35,900 tons, 25 knots. 10 16-inch guns in two triple and two twin turrets, 12-inch belt. And they've actually gone back to a rational gun layout. The speed is quite impressive. The armor isn't impressive, but it's acceptable. This is quite a nice dreadnought Austria's built. I'm more impressed by Austria-Hungary than by France, honestly. Um, so then after Austria-Hungary, we have Italy. Italy has been skimping on its dreadnoughts since the start of the era, and now only has five of them, amounting to 138,000 tons. Two of which, Vittorio Veneto and Ruggiero de Loria, are ancient. 20,200 tons, 21 knots, 10 12-inch guns in five twin turrets, but two of them are wing turrets, a 9-inch belt. Basically, it's an 8 12-inch gun broadside, which is not really enough anymore. The speed is fine. The armor is severely lacking. These are no longer really viable frontline combat ships in the modern era, but uh, I, mean, I have one that's like that, and it's not as bad as that either, so I'm going to judge someone. Especially since their next battleships were built almost 10 years later with Rey Umberto. 31,100 tons, 24 knots, 10 16-inch guns in two triple and two twin turrets, and a 12-inch belt. Now, to Italy's credit, this is a very nice battleship, much quite similar to the Austro-Hungarian one we just looked at at the end there. Uh, a heavy armament, a good speed, a very respectable armor. There's nothing at all wrong with this. This is quite, quite nice, yeah. They followed with... No. They followed with Emanuela Filiberto, which 31,400 tons, 26 knots... 10 15 inch guns in the same gun layout, 11 and a half inch belt. Okay. See, now they're starting to sacrifice armor for speed, which is not really what a battleship is supposed to do. It will increase the longevity of this a little bit. And they especially sacrificed gun powers because they went down to 15 inch guns, which I really question that decision. Uh, so I don't like this change that they made. It's still not a bad battleship, but I think Ray Umberto is better. <laughs> And then the most recent, Andrea Doria, 34,800 tons, 25 knots, 10 15-inch guns, same layout, 13-inch belt, two spotter aircraft tossed in as well. I mean, I, would st I still kind of wish they would just go back to the 16-inch guns, because most of the newest ones from the major powers are using 16-inch guns, but it's not like 15-inch guns are that much worse. It's got very good armor. Best I've seen the AI put on anything so far. And... It's fast, too, so this is... Andrea Doria really is quite a nice battleship. Uh, after Italy, we have Japan. Japan has 12 battleships amounting to 350,000 tons, more or less. Quite a formidable fleet. Uh, the, older, the oldest is Kashima from 1911, although Satsuma might actually be older. I don't know. 
Not clear on why the order is this way. Kashima, 20,100 tons, 19 knots, 10 12 inch guns, which five twin turrets, two of them are wing, nine and a half inch belt. Look, we've seen several like this. They're just too old. Well, this one's too slow, too under armored, and eight 12 inch guns is not good enough anymore. It's really too old, but. And the story with Satsuma is exactly the same, but maybe even more so, because it only makes 18 knots. Or, well, okay, Kawachi of the Satsuma class. Um, also very much very similar and too old. Uh, then, Aki and Yashima, which are the much fancier follow-up. 25,900 tons, 20 knots. 12 14 inch guns and 6 twin turrets plus a 10 and a half inch belt. I can't help but notice that it only has 8 14 inch guns to a side because it's got 4 giant wing turrets. Um, so this, you know, mediocre speed, mediocre armor, or just pretty bad armor for a battleship. And that gun layout? Well, it's still got a decent amount of firepower, but I'm very, very not impressed. Uh, not too great. Uh, they followed that with Setsu, which is much better, yeah. 28,100 tons, 22 knots, 12 14-inch guns in two twin, two triple turrets, actually with a somewhat rational layout, and an 11 and a half inch belt. This, you know, of course, it shows its age with only having 14-inch guns. Its armor is not brilliant, but it's not bad either. This is quite a nice battleship still, really. Not terrible at all. Uh, they then built Fuji and Hayuga, which at 32,200 tons, 23 knots, have 11 14-inch guns in one triple and four twin turrets, plus an 11.5-inch belt. Okay, it's a very odd choice to have a single triple turret thrown in there, rather than just having five twin turrets. I have to think that causes all kinds of random mechanical and logistical complexities. Although I guess those probably aren't really reflected in the game that much. But, uh, I mean, the speed is good. The armament is powerful, although those two central guns are not really laid out well. And the armor is decent, so there's nothing terribly wrong with the Fujis. I'm just a little weirded out by them. Uh, more recently, they've built Nagato and Asahi, which have 25,000 tons, 20 knots, 9 14-inch guns, 10-inch belt. Oh, this is actually much worse again, though, see? The speed is mediocre. It's less guns, and one of them is very much in the middle in a way that makes it really need to bear broadside. And the armor is pretty bad for a battleship, so uh, I'm not too impressed by the Japanese fleet so far. Uh, from this decade, we have Hizen, 24,200 tons, 20 knots, 8 14-inch guns, and a 9.5-inch... Okay, this is like the last thing, but budget. They've taken more armor off, and a barrel off of the central turret, which just makes it generally worse in every way, and it already wasn't that spectacular. Uh, then Kaga, from the same year, which is... How is it so much lighter? 21,700 tons, 20 knots, 8 14 inch guns, 2 triple, 1 twin, 10 inch belt. I can't help but notice that it has half an inch more belt armor, and most of the other stuff is pretty much the same. But it weighs 3,000 or 2,500 tons less than he's in, which really makes me question what they took off of Kaga to get her down to this weight. Does this ship have, like, no torpedo protection, or is it short-ranged or cramped or something? It's, it's ringing alarm bells in terms of something is weirdly compromised about Kaga's design, probably. Uh, more recently built, and they're first with bigger than 14-inch guns, Sagami. 33,700 tons, 23 knots, 9 15-inch guns in three triple turrets, 13-inch belt, her speed is good. Her armor is quite good. Um, her armament is not that bad, except for the fact that one of the turrets is central instead of just putting it super-firing somewhere. 
So this ship's not terrible, but I'm not really impressed either, honestly. The AI seems to have a real problem with building just, like, putting guns in super-firing positions uh, at times. Okay, so that leaves the big four. Russia has the fourth strongest battleship fleet. Twelve battleships amounting to 350,000 tons. It's very, very close with Japan, to be fair. Uh, the oldest is Poltava, last of her class. She shouldn't be around either anymore. 18,500 tons, 19 knots, 12 11-inch guns, 9.5-inch belt. The 11-inch guns are laid out with four wing turrets, so they've really only got eight to a side, which combined with their 11-inch guns, and she's slow, and she's under-armored, means that, well, for instance, almost any battlecruiser on the seas would eat this ship alive, let alone a battleship. Um, that ship's got problems, yeah. They do build big classes in Russia, which, or at least they did for a little while. With They followed her with Imperator Nikolai I times four, Nikolai I, Alexander III, Peter Veliki, and Petro Pavlovsk. 24 knots, 28,100 tons, 10 12-inch guns, 13-inch belt. Uh, the 12-inch guns are five twin turrets, but two of them are in a cross-deck arrangement. It's fast, and it's well-armored. Um, so I actually think they did the best they could with, I'm assuming they had a limitation that made them have to have cross-deck fire, although, you know, four centerline guns would have been much better. But um, out of all the cross-deck fire designs I've seen, this one is really not bad, considering the speed and armor it has, and decent firepower still, although for 1914, the fact they were still using 12-inch guns is a little concerning. Uh, however, in 1917, they then built another class of four, the Imperatrice Ekaterina Velikaya class, with that, plus Mikhail Kutasov, uh, Dvenetsvat Apostolov, right? Yeah. And they have Stuffy. Now these, 31,000 tons, 23 knots, 10 14-inch guns in five twin turrets, and an 11-inch belt. Um, the speed is good. The armament is mostly good, except for... In their shoes, I would definitely have gone for just making two of the turrets triples instead of sticking a fifth turret into the middle of the ship, which is just very questionable, both from a weight perspective and a firing lines perspective. Plus, the armor is kind of mediocre. But it's not hopelessly compromised or anything. It's a pretty powerful battleship still. Uh, and then since then, they've only built three this decade. Uh, Georgi Pobodonosits, which 31,900 tons, 26 knots, nine 14-inch guns and three triple turrets, 11.5-inch belt, not well, it's fast. The armor is mediocre. The armament is in itself not good for the 20s, really. And one of them being in the center, I'm not too impressed. But it's almost like a battle cruiser, honestly, with that kind of speed that they're piling onto it. I don't think it really qualifies as a fast battleship, at least. If my Constellation class battlecruisers don't, then this definitely doesn't. <laughs> um, then Andre Pervolzvani, which 29,400 tons, 23 knots, 10 14 inch guns, 10 and a half inch belt. Still five twin turrets instead of just doing some triples. I wonder if they don't have triples in Russia or what. Um, the speed is good, the armament is not as good as it once would have been. Um, the armament is not... I'm not going to give them credit for it anymore, as I once did, because it's this was built in, like, 1923 or something, and they should have 21. Still, they probably should have had 15 or 16-inch. At least 15-inch guns by this point. And then the 10.5-inch belt is too little. And finally, Borodino... 34,000 tons, 28 knots, 
nine 14 inch guns in three triple turrets and a 12 inch belt. This just is a, fa this basically is a battle cruiser or something. I, I don't know how to define it. It's so fast. It's much faster than most battleships. It's as fast as battle cruisers. Um, and its armor is not that out of place for a battle cruiser because I have several battle cruisers with that much armor. However, its armament is then less than any battle cruiser, so I don't quite know what to make of it in that regard. So we then have um, uh, so, oh, sorry. So that's it for the Russian battleships. Um, the fact that even the very latest of them doesn't have bigger than 14-inch guns is really rather unimpressive. I mean, I'm seriously considering phasing out the last of my 14-inch gun battleships very shortly, and Russia hasn't even started that process. And in fact, their latest battlecruisers prove that they have 16-inch guns now, although those are the very first ships with bigger than 14-inch guns they've ever built. So I think their tech is being a problem for them in Russia, maybe. Uh, so that does bring us on to the American fleet, which is 12 battleships amounting to 420,000 tons, very closely matched with Germany for second, third largest battleship fleet in the world. Uh, the oldest American battleship, the Lame Duck at this point, is USS Delaware. Or, not the Lame Duck, the Ugly Duckling, that is. Is USS Delaware, 27,100 tons, 20 knots, 10 12-inch guns in two triple and two twin turrets, 12-inch belt, 2-inch deck. Um, her speed is below average. Her armament was good at the moment that she was built, but has marked her as further and further behind ever since. Uh, her armor... Well, I've certainly seen worse from a lot of the AI battleships, but in my opinion, it's not very good anymore. Um, she's still not hopelessly worthless, in all honesty. But not, not least because of how many really old battleships like her the AI still has in service. Uh, but I am looking to replace her as soon as possible, basically. Uh, we then have four Kentucky class, USS Kentucky, Rhode Island, Georgia, and Indiana. These are 30,500 tons, 21 knots, eight 14 inch guns in four twin turrets, 16 fives, 13 inch belt, two and a half inch deck. Um, there's nothing so much to say about these except that, so far as I'm concerned, they don't have any really obvious flaws. They're just old now. The 14-inch guns were very nice, and the armor was very nice, and the speed was quite good at the time that she was built. It's just that the 14-inch guns... Honestly, considering how the AI is armoring its ships, I'm not even sure the armor is that much behind. I think some of the more modern AI ships have more deck armor, but I'm not even sure about that. And... The speed is still fine, for the most part, honestly. The only thing that's really marking her as behind is the 14-inch is the guns, compared to 15 and 16 inches that other people have now. But even then, just being in a good layout gives them such an advantage over other AI ships that I really don't think the Kentuckys are hopeless yet, despite being 16 years old. Uh, they're followed by what was, I believe, once four Minnesotas, but is now three USS Minnesota, Washington, and New Jersey. 39,200 tons, 21 knots, 10 16-inch guns, 24 5-inch guns, a 14-inch belt, a 3-inch deck. I'm fairly confident that at the moment these were built, these were the most powerful battleships in the world. I think they're still pretty much comparable to any battleship I've seen from the AI so far. I think they're probably still the best armored battleships in the world, pending what the AI may have put into deck armor, but I really think they just continuously under-armor their ships, so I'm not actually convinced that any of them have more than maybe... that have any of them have a lot more deck armor than that. The speed is still adequate. The gunnery, 
or the guns on these are still very much adequate. So it's hard to say that there's any flaws with the. Mi I mean, that's a lot of hubris, but uh. The biggest flaws actually are things that don't really show up here and I can't compare to on the AI, which is that their torpedo protection is a little old, along with some other uh, not really obvious things. But they're definitely still going to be in the line of battle for another probably decade. I wouldn't at all be surprised if they were still here in 1940. Uh, the Kentuckys will be gone by then, I hope, but uh, the Minnesotas might well still be in it. And then our four most modern capital ships... Well, no, not quite, actually. The Constellation... No. Yes, actually. And then our four most modern capital ships... Uh, the Illinois class. 38,200 tons. So actually, marginally less by 1,000 tons than the Minnesotas, but... 21 knots, 10 16 inch guns, 24 fives, and 4 dual purpose 3 inch guns, plus an actual AA armament, 14 inch belt, 4 inch deck. I'm fairly confident that these are the best armored ships in the entire world. I am both belt and deck. Um, the armament of 10 16 inch guns with two twins and two triples is. I mean, there are a few AI battle cruisers, even, and battleships running around with 12 16-inch guns or some such, but honestly, now I'm trying to think, are there any other battleships with... Yeah, there's a couple. The French. But nobody outside of the French really has 10 16-inch guns. There's very few modern ships with that many, uh, whereas I have seven with that much firepower. Um, so... These are pretty much still the state of the art so far as battleships go. Not that I'm not... There is a new class, uh, if you watch the campaign, that you'll see a new class was designed within a year or two of this, but it's now ready yet in 1930. But um, the Illinois are still very, very formidable battleships. Overall, I think the US-12, I mean, Delaware is the odd one out, but the US-12 are a very formidable set of battleships compared to what's still running around in the world in general. Um, and that just leaves Germany and Britain. Now, Germany has 13 battleships in service, amounting to 420,000 tons, almost evenly matched with the US. They have one more ship, which of course means their average is lower. And that's in no small part because of the four Preussen class ships, Preussen, Bayern, Weissenberg, and Elsass from 1913. 26,600 tons, 20 knots, 10 12-inch guns, five twin turrets, cross-deck fire, a 12-inch belt. Their speed is mediocre. Their armor is good. Their armament, uh, well, it's would be equal to Delaware's, except the cross-deck fire means it's actually worse. So, they weren't genius or anything even when they were built. They're definitely obsolete now, uh, by and large. They probably should not have four of them in service still, but they're clearly trying to make up the numbers to meet, to match me and Britain and Russia, so... I can sort of understand. Uh, they followed that with... Wow, isn't Germany nice and neat all the way around, huh? Three classes, basically, is their entire... No, three classes is literally their entire battleship force. They followed that up with five Schlesians. Schlesian, Palmer, Zaringen, Wurth, and Wittelsbach, which 30,700 tons, 20 knots, 10 14-inch guns, and five twin turrets, also still cross-deck firing, 12.5-inch belt. This is... Basically just the Parisians, but with 14-inch guns instead, and slightly thicker armor, which of course costs an extra 4,000-something tons, but um, I would have expected by 1917 that they should have been able to get rid of cross-deck fire. Uh, so that makes these kind of a letdown. They're almost certainly inferior to my Kentucky class, although, well, not by a huge margin. I mean, they still have eight maybe up to 10 guns bearing. My Kentuckys have marginally better armor, but not much, so it'd be pretty close, probably. But then they only have 
four battle. I mean, they do have five battleships better than that, to their credit. No, four. I just can't count. Okay. And then the thing about the Mecklenburgs is that they're not the big step forward that my Minnesotas and Illinois were. The Mecklenburg, Vetten, Deutschland, Braunschweig are actually smaller at 29,100 tons. They make 26 knots. They're armed with 12 14 inch guns and four triple turrets. And they're all center line. But they've only got an 8.5 inch belt. So what the Mecklenburgs actually are is battle cruisers. They've got a lot of guns. They're really fast. They don't have enough armor to be a battleship. These are literally battle cruisers. And not great battle cruisers, although they've got a lot of firepower. But considering they were built 1920 onwards, which is when I was I had Minnesota's in service already by then, which they're clearly inferior to. Germany's battleship development basically stopped with the Schlesians for some reason. They've never even built what I would consider a proper centerline battleship. I mean, the armor on these is just so weak. They are starting to finally rectify that uh, because they've laid down Oldenburg, which at 44,000 tons, I'm guessing is much larger and better armed and armored than their preceding ships. But uh, yeah, Germany's battleship fleet I would consider pretty much no threat to mine. And that just leaves Britain at 16 battleships, amounting to 504,500 tons in surface, which is a hell of a lot. And unlike a lot of others, they don't shrink at putting pretty big calibers on them, to be fair. The oldest is Anson, HMS Anson from 1912, 26,300 tons, 22 knots, 10 14 inch guns. In five twin turrets, 11 and a half inch belt. You know, I mean, okay. The one gun is in the middle, which isn't great. But the speed is good. The armor is not bad, especially by British standards. This is a fairly formidable battleship, especially to be Britain's oldest battleship. Not bad at all. It's definitely from their, you know, proper second 14 inch gun generation. Uh, then we have Magnificent, which. I feel like there were more of the Resolution Class 1s. Maybe they even lost one, but maybe not. I'm probably wrong about that. But anyway, Magnificent, 29,100 tons, 21 knots, 12 14-inch guns, and 4 triple turrets, 10-inch belt. Her firepower and layout is good. Her speed is good. The obvious problem is that she does not have as much armor as she really should have. But I'll sort of, well, I'm not going to let it go, but um, not a bad battleship all around, nonetheless. Uh, they then built HMS Rodney, which 31,800 tons, 21 knots, 10 15-inch guns, uh, which is in five twin turrets. One of them is in the center, a 10.5-inch belt. Honestly, I'm not really sure this is better than Resolution, because it's actually got two less barrels, even if they're a bigger caliber. And one of them is in this stupid place in the middle of the ship. And the armor is also still pretty bad. So I'm not overly impressed by Rodney. Um, they then built Camperdown, Majestic, and Jupiter. 33,200 tons. 21 knots. 12 15-inch guns in two twin, two triple turrets. 11 and a half inch belt. Okay, these are quite nice. The speed is fine. The, well... Oh, three twin two triple turrets, um, which technically should not change my opinion negatively because it's more guns, but the fact that they have one in this central position just ruins it aesthetically for me. Um, however, it is a lot of firepower, and most of it is not badly laid out, and the armor is pretty decent, so the camper downs are definitely not terrible at all. Um, then, man, they built a lot of one-offs, which is really annoying when I'm doing this. Uh, Renown, 32,700 tons, 24 knots, 10 15-inch guns, 12-inch belt, two triples, two, two... See, I would rather just build a bunch of Renowns than a bunch of Camper Downs, although the speed, I would have put the speed into armor instead, but, um, Britain pretty much refuses to do that, so... 
still overall quite a nice 15 inch gun battleship. HMS Mars, 30,100 tons, 23 knots, 12 14 inch guns, 4 triple turrets, 10 and a half inch belt. Well, the firepower's not bad, although it's weird to go back to 14 inch guns. The speed is good. The armor is too, is re rather mediocre again, too little. HMS Redoubtable, 23,000 tons, 21 knots, 8 15 inch guns. Um, two triples and one center line twin. Or, I mean, one center of the ship twin. Ten and a half inch belt. Um, eight 15 inch guns is fine, but that's a stupid layout for them. And the armor is not good either. And honestly, I'm just marking them off for not having any sort of standardization at this point. They're just changing calibers and layouts hugely from design to design. Like, have a little consistency that, so that this is going to cause confusion in battle, you know? Like, the capabilities of their battleships are wildly different from each other. HMS Hannibal, 34,200 tons, 24 knots. 10 16-inch guns in two triple and two twin turrets. 11 and a half inch belt. See, this is quite a nice battleship. It's still got more speed and less armor than I would opt for. But it's got very good firepower, and both the speed and the armor are within what I would call acceptable parameters. So it's quite a powerful battleship. They finally built an actual class again with the two uh, Barfleur and Irresistible. Unfortunately, that actual class is garbage, because they've managed to build a 16-inch gun battleship that's 23,300 tons and 23 knots. And the compromise is that it's got six guns in three twin turrets and a nine and a half inch belt. Sorry, tons of interruptions today. So, um, yeah, three twin 16 inch turrets and a nine and a half inch belt. Look, it doesn't have enough gun barrels, no matter how large they are. Um, and it doesn't have enough armor either. You could get away with that maybe on a battle cruiser. Not on a battleship, and it doesn't have enough speed to count as a battlecruiser. Um, and then there are three most modern designs. HMS Revenge, which is the second largest battleship. 37,900 tons, 26 knots, 10 16-inch guns in two twin, two triple turrets, 11-inch belt. Well, it's very fast, almost battlecruiser fast. It's got a very heavy armament. Its armor is not terrible. So I would say this is a pretty strong battleship design all around. I still think it would lose to either my Minnesota or my Illinois class in a shooting match because of its armor. But it's not terrible. Uh, then HMS Collingwood, a one-off. 33,400 tons, 24 knots. Nine 16-inch guns in three triple turrets. And bafflingly, one of them's in the middle of the ship. And... 13 and a half inch belt. Okay. Respect to them for finally armoring one of their ships properly. And the speed is good too. The gunpower would be fine if not for this weird layout. But honestly, overall, I still think it's one of their better battleships. And the very most recent and largest design HMS Hood and Bulwark. 39,900 tons, 23 knots. Nine 16 inch guns in three triple turrets and a 15 inch belt. Now, these I really are am impressed by. This is, first of all, this is this is just the Nelson class, almost like to the T. It's got the same, actually, I actually looked it up. It's got the same speed, it's got the same armament, it's got very close to the same armor, um, and close to kind of ish close to the same displacement even um, full load that is um, I quite I mean I quite like it this is quite an impressive battleship design actually it's just a shame it's the literally like the only battleship design in the entire British fleet that isn't weirdly compromised by too little armor or weird layout or something but Hood and Bulwark are definitely ships to watch out for they're about the only ones in the fleet that I actually think could win a slugging match with some of my latest battleships, maybe. Uh, so definitely something to watch out for. 
in future, potentially. So, if you made it this far, thank you everybody for watching. If you did enjoy it, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, the next special will be when we get to 1940 in the Let's Play. So, have a nice day, everybody. This is Seal Agenda, signing off.